Hi everyone, I'm Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. Welcome to the course Seismic Evaluation and Retrofit of Structures. Over at the Department of Construction Engineering, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. This is Lecture 4-1, Simplified Detail Evaluation 1. Because it's a detailed evaluation, we need much more information about the structure, including the dimension of the structure and its structural members, the reinforcement of the members, the material strengths of concrete or steel. Because it is a simplified one, therefore it can be handled by hand calculation. And here are some terminologies. Simplified detail evaluation in Chinese, 简易详细评估, is a detailed evaluation. We need much more information about the structure, but yes, it's a simplified one. It can be conducted by hand calculation. Since we need the structural, the material strength, uh, material strength, so that we have to take some concrete core, concrete core drilling, in Chinese, 混凝土专心, and the action of concrete core drilling is concrete core sampling, in Chinese, 混凝土专心取样. In addition, we have to know about the reinforcement of the of those structural members. Therefore, we have to conduct reinforcement detection in Chinese, Gang Jin Tan Se, in order to know about the quantity of the reinforcement and also the size, the diameter of those rebars. From material strengths, we can compute the fractional strength of column or beams, and in Chinese, Lao Chu Chang Du. And we also can compute the shear strength of the column and beams. And in Chinese, Jian Li Chang Du. And the seismic force is uh, vertically distributed, distributed to stories, so that we can have story seismic force. And in Chinese, Di Zhen Li Zhi, Su Xiang Fen Pei. And we take a column line from a structure and uh, from a uh, by using a moment uh, equilibrium, then we can find the lateral strength of that column line. And in Chinese, li ju ping hang. And there are so uh, different failure modes of the column line, and the failure mode in Chinese is called po hai mo shi. Material strength. Speaking of uh, compressed strength of concrete, we have to take concrete core from the column or from the beam. And the number of concrete core samples depends on area of each floor, AF. If the area of a floor is less than 600 square meter, at least three, three samples for that floor have to be taken. If the floor area is larger than 600 square meter, at least N samples, N equal to three, plus AF minus 600 divided by 400. And the number here is run up to the nearest integer. A building may be constructed in two or more different periods of time. And the number of concrete core samples depends on the floor area of each period. If the floor area is less than or equal to 300 square meter for that period of construction, then at least two samples is needed. If the floor area lies between 300 and 600 square meter, at least three, pen, three samples is necessary for that period of time. If the floor area of that period of construction is larger than 600 square meter, at least n samples, n equal to 3 plus AF minus 600 divided by 400, 
and it's run up to the nearest integer. And uh, about the depth of uh, concrete cover, at least we have to measure three paces for columns and for beams, respectively, for each floor. And about the yielding, about the yielding strength of steel, if the design value or test value is available, and just use it. If not, we may assign 2600 kgf per cm square for the yielding strength of steel. Because from the sampling of uh, existing buildings, we know that it's very common for the yielding strength of steel in existing building is larger than 2600 kgf cm square. Therefore, it is conservative enough to just assign 2600 kgf per cm square for the yielding strength of steel. Rebar detection is necessary so that we, we, have to, we can know about the quantity, number of rebars, and also the diameter of, of the rebars. At least three paces for columns and three paces for beams for each floor. If necessary, remove the concrete cover and check the quantity and size of the longitudinal and transverse reinforcement. If design drawings are available, then we can confirm them. If not, we have to reconstruct the design drawings. And in this lecture, we will focus on seismic capacity from simplified detailed evaluation. Seismic capacity or the ultimate basis strength of a building, VBS, equal to beta times VVM. And VVM is the sum of lateral strength of vertical members. And beta is the reduction factor for the ultimate lateral strength because the strength, the lateral strength of all vertical members may not develop at the same time so that we have to reduce the summation. And we take two-story building as an example. If a column line from a two-story building is taken, then there may be four most likely failure modes. The first one is floor column shear failure. The second one is column flexural failure in the first floor. And the third one is the bin flexural failure on the second floor. And the fourth one, the last one, is the bin flexural failure at the second and the roof of the building, of the column line. And seismic force or the base shear is distributed vertically to, the, to each story. And F2, F3 is the seismic force of the second floor and the roof. And F2 is proportional to the weight, W2, and the elevation of the second floor. F3 is proportional to the weight of the floor of the roof and also the elevation of the roof, H3. Therefore, F2 equal to W2, H2 divided by W2, H2 plus W3, H3 times V. V is the seismic force of the building, of the second of the two-story building. Therefore, F2 equal to alpha 2 times V2. Similarly, we can have F3 equal to alpha 3 V. And this is taken from the seismic design code equation 2-18. And alpha, alpha 3 equal to is a non-dimensional number, equal to W3 H3 divided by W2 H2 plus W3 H3. And alpha 2 equal to W2 H2 divided by W2 H2 plus W3 H3. And alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equal to 1. And F2 F3 is the seismic force of the second floor and the roof. And W2 W3 is the weight or dead loads of the second floor and the roof. And H2 H3 are the elevation of the second floor and the roof. And V is the base shear force. And here's an assumption here. The vertical distribution of the base shear for a column line is the same as the building. And here's the column line 
the vertical distribution of the base sheet of the column line is the same as the building, and V is the base shear of the column line, so that is distributed is distributed to the second floor and the roof. Here, alpha two V is the seismic force at the second floor, and alpha three V is the seismic force on the roof, and alpha two alpha three for the column line is the same as the building, and we have alpha two plus alpha 3 equal to 1, the summation of alpha 2 and alpha 3 equal to 1. And considering the first failure mode, it is shear failure on the first floor column. And v, Vn is the shear strength of the column. Then we take this as a free body diagram, and Vn is the shear strength of a column, and V1 is the lateral strength of the column line. And from force equilibrium, we have V1 equal to Vn. That means that the lateral strength of the column line for failure mode 1 equal to Vn. And from a concrete structure design code equation 4-2, Vn equal to the summation of Vc and Vs. And Vc is the shear strength contributed by concrete. And Vs is the shear strength contributed by steel. And the shear strength contributed by concrete Vc can be calculated according to the code equation 4-2. Vc equal to point three, uh, 53 times 1 plus NU divided by 140 AG times square root of SC prime, BWD. NU is the design actual force and positive for pressure and negative for tension. That means that under pressure, VC, because uh, this is one is positive, VC become larger. And under tension, the shear strength contributed by concrete become less. And AG is the total area or the gross area of the column cross section, and FC prime is the complex is the complex strength of concrete, and BW is the width of the column, and D is the effective depth of the column. And VS the shear strength contributed by steel equal to AV times FYT times D divided by S. And AB is the cross-sectional area of transverse reinforcement in spacing S. And spacing S is the spacing of transverse reinforcement. And FYT is the yielding, yielding strength of transverse concrete. And we move to the, to the second failure mode. So far we have the lateral strength under the first failure mode. And then we move to the second failure mode. Is the fractional strength? Is the fractional failure of the first floor column? That means that at the bottom of the column, fractional strength is developed, and at the top of the column, fractional strength is also developed. And then from this failure mode, we can have the free body, free body diagram here, and V two is the lateral strength of this failure mode. And MC1 is the moment strength of the first floor column. And from a moment equilibrium, we can have V2 equal to MC1 plus MC1 divided by HC1 equal to 2MC1 divided by HC1. And MC1 is the moment strength of the first floor column. And HC1 is the first floor clear height. So far we have the lateral strength under first failure mode V1 and the lateral strength under second failure mode V2 and then we move to the third failure mode and the flexural strength or the moment strength of the beam on the second floor is developed so that we can have the free body diagram here and uh, alpha 2, alpha 3 are known because they are proportional to the weight and also the elevation 
of that floor and MC1, MC2 along once we know the detailing, the reinforcement of the column and also the material strength of the column. MB2L and MB2R are also known once we know the reinforcement and material strength of the column. Therefore, only one unknown here is V3, the lateral strength of the beam of the column 9 under failure mode 3. So that from moment equilibrium, we can solve for V3. Okay, we take moment about this point. Because of moment equilibrium, the clockwise moment of a 2, V3 times H2, H2 is the elevation of the second floor, plus of a 3, V3 times H3. H3 is the, is the elevation of the roof equal to the counterclockwise moment, MC1, MC2, plus B and B2L and MB2R. And there's one equation here, and only one unknown, there's a V3, so that we can solve for V3 equal to MC1 plus MC2 plus MB2L plus MB2R divided by alpha 2H2 plus alpha 3H3. So far we have the lateral strength under failure mode 1, failure mode 2, and failure mode 4. Then we move to the last failure mode. There's a second floor and roof beam flexural, uh, flexural uh, failure. That means that the beam on the second floor and the roof are fully developed in, uh, in moment. So that from this failure mode, we can have the free body diagram here. And V4 is the only unknown. Alpha 2, alpha 3 unknown. And the moment strength, along once we know the reinforcement of the members and also the material strength. If we take moment about this point, according to moment equilibrium, the clockwise moment equal to the anticlockwise moment. And the summation of clockwise moment equal to alpha 2v4 times h2, the elevation of the second floor, alpha 3v4 times h3, the elevation of the roof, equal to mc1, the counterclockwise moment, and uh, mb2l, mb2r, mb3l, and mb3r. Therefore, we can have one equation, one unknown, and V4 can be solved to be MC1 plus MB2L plus MB2R plus MB3L plus MB3R divided by alpha 2H2 plus alpha 3H3. So far we have the lateral strength of the column line under four failure modes. V1, V2, V4, and v, V3 and V4. Then pick up the minimum one and this is the failure mode to be realized or this is the control failure mode therefore the lateral the final lateral strength of column line j vcj equal to the minimum of v1 v2 v3 and v4 once we have the lateral strength of all the columns then we can combine all together to have the ultimate base shear strength of the for the structure since different columns may have different failure mode, and all the column line may not develop their strength at the same time, so that we have the reduction factor here. If the failure mode is first floor shear failure, column shear failure, then beta j equal to 0.85. If the failure mode is first floor column flexural failure, then beta j is higher equal to 0.90. Other, there's some bin fractal failure mode is involved, then beta j equal to 0.95. With the lateral strength of individual column and multiply by the corresponding reduction factor and combine all together, we can come up with the ultimate base shear strength of the structure. For the, if the failure mode is first floor column shear failure, 
is a least ductile failure mode. So that the lateral strength of this column line is very difficult to superimpose with others, with the lateral strength of other members. Therefore, we have the highest reduction factor, beta j equal to 0 0.85. The next one is the failure mode of the first floor, column flexural failure. The ductility is better, but not the best one. So the beta j is higher than 0 0.85, equal to 0.90. Others, the beam flexural failure mode failure is involved. Then it's the lowest one. This is the most ductile failure mode. Therefore, beta j equal to 0.95. Because under this failure mode, it's easier for the lateral strength of this column line to be superimposed with other structural members. So that it has the lowest reduction factor. Once we have the lateral strength of individual column line and the corresponding corresponding reduction factor, then we combine all together, then we can come up with the base shear strength of the structure. That's the seismic capacity of the structure. And here is a step-by-step -step procedure to come up with the seismic capacity of a building by simplified detailed evaluation. Step one, confirm or reconstruct design drawings. If design drawings are available, then we can confirm it by doing some tests. If design drawings are not available, then we have to reconstruct the design drawings. And step two, take samples and test the material and assign the material strengths. Step three, Compute the full weight and also the column actual actual load. WIF is the is the weight of the is, is the weight of the ice floor, and NCJ is the actual force actual load of column J. And step four, according based on the information here, the material strength and also the size of the members and also the actual load of the column, then we can compute the moment strength, MCJ, shear strength of column, VCJ, and also the moment strength of beams, MBJ. Once we have the moment strength and shear strength of the column, and the moment strength of the beams, and then under failure modes, under different failure mode, and we use a moment equilibrium or force equilibrium, then we can find the lateral strength corresponding to that failure mode VK. And with all possible failure mode, pick up the minimum one. Is the failure mode to be realized or is the control failure mode? Then we can have the ultimate base shear of the column line J. VCJ equal to the minimum of VK. Then with different failure mode, we can assign the reduction factor for the for the column line beta j. Once we have the base shear or the lateral strength of lateral strength of different column line and the corresponding reduction factor, then we can combine all together to have the ultimate base shear strength of the structure. That is the seismic capacity of the structure by using simplified detailed evaluation. And here's some reference. The first one, Seismic Design Code, published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. And the second one, Concrete Structure Design Code, is also published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. And here's the link to the code. And the video for Lecture 4, Simplified Detailed Evaluation 1, is under, under construction. It will, be out, it will be uploaded to YouTube later. And this is the videos for Lecture 3, preliminary, preliminary Evaluation, and Lecture 2, Lecture 1. In this lecture, we talk about simplified detailed evaluation, and we study how to determine the seismic capacity of a structure by simplified detailed evaluation. 
and we take a column line from the structure, there may be different possible failure modes. Under different failure mode, we can compute the lateral strength of the column line by using moment equilibrium or force equilibrium. So that we have VK corresponding to, to the failure mode K. Once we have the lateral strength of all possible failure mode, pick up the minimum one and assign to be the lateral strength of the column line. With different failure mode, we can assign different reduction factor for the column line, beta j. Once we have the lateral strength of all the column line and the corresponding reduction factor, we can combine all together to have the ultimate base shear strength of structure, VBS. That is the seismic capacity of a structure by using simplified detail evaluation. Because it's a simplified evaluation, therefore it can be conducted by hand calculation. And it's a detailed evaluation, we have to know about much more information about the structure, the dimension of the structure, the dimension of the structural members, the reinforcement of the members, and also the material strength in the members. And all the, uh, all the video are uploaded to this channel. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.